swatted away by Terry and Randolph. The blue collar guy, the transfer from Temple College, the senior out of Dallas, Texas. Right, you think you only see chemistry maybe off the court. You really can watch the passing, the communication, the selflessness. Local with another chance. He looked all of seven feet that time. Seven feet, one inches, and very impactful. We're going to see a lot of that this year. And the thing that stood out to me, how easy was that for him? I mean, he had position, but the skill work, he comes under the basket so long, and just an easy bucket for him, very skilled. Couldn't hang on to the basketball that time. Christian Coloco last year, two points, two rebounds a game. Now you see him right here, just kind of push off right there to get the ball. Nice little job using the rim there. He's got the seven four wingspan. You see that on offense right now, and that'll be used more, more than anything on the defensive end. But I think this kid has a chance to be really special for this team. I loved him last year even in, in, in small minutes. And it's, it's hard to play great when you have limited minutes. Uh, as you know, when he gets a ton of minutes here, I think you're gonna see a great player. There's a steal from Coloco. You bet, pop that basketball loose. He trails it right now. Terry tries to pull it together, couldn't do so underneath. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, you're right, great hands defensively. Look, when you think about Coloco, there were smiles, there were joy, and you enjoyed the height, and he tried to figure out where he belonged in the floor. But let's remember, in some key games, he had five points and three blocks in 10 minutes in a win against Oregon State. He helped some big moments for this team last year, albeit in small samples. Yeah, and I remember the Baylor game on the road. He comes in for a shot, little 15-footer. He knocks it down. Speaking of knocking it down, there's Akinjo with his first bucket as a Wildcat. And we'll talk a lot about this kid who comes in with high praise. Sean Miller really loves his competitiveness. Akinjo, the transfer from Georgetown. He was the Big East freshman of the year. In his 40 games in a year plus at Georgetown, 13 points, three rebounds, five assists per game. Yeah, I think that's, you mentioned the five assists, and I think that's a great drive and dish there to the big fella. Nice job getting into the lane by Grambling. But I, I, you know, see this little, well, you, you know, you think about what a Kinjo can do shooting the ball. We know he can shoot it, averaged a ton of points, shot it a lot. But I think people forget he averaged the five assists. Not easy to do as a freshman in the Big East when you've got that point guard position. So he is unselfish, but let's also not mistake that I think he's a scoring point guard. I think the guy that I remember him most like than Sean obviously will would probably agree with this is a Mark Lyons type guy transferred from Xavier came out here at Arizona and played that one season Ben Matherin came on and Matherin fires that one up as an offensive foul is whistled against the Cats underneath there's Benedict Matherin out of Montreal we didn't even mention Canada when we mentioned the diversity of this team this is a guy that was actually, albeit up in Canada, a very talented quarterback as a young man. It's a four-star recruit, so he checks in, and as well as Azulas uh, Tubelas, the young man out of Vilnius in Lithuania. So a couple of freshmen, impact freshmen are on. I'm interested to see Matherin in the athleticism. The, the coaches talk a lot about him being a guy that plays above the rim. Long distance miss and up the ladder, grabbing it on the move is Baker. Handles the ball very well as he stops in the lane. A beautiful pass underneath. We just talked about two Bellas, his first two college points, but it was all set up by Baker. Yeah, didn't take him long, did it? And he's down the court, but you notice the size of number 10. He is a big kid, runs the floor. Watch him kind of box out here to get Baker that space and then makes himself available. And I think I've always said this, lefties have a little bit of an advantage. That left hand, always hard to guard. It'll be fun to watch him. 6'11", 245, man. His brother Totalas Tubelas also on this team. They both are in different skill sets, certainly. When you think about Tubelas for Sean Miller, he knew who he was, obviously. This was an all-star at Basketball Without Borders, a great event put on by the NBA. And we were told, look, He's sixth or seventh right now. I mean, he has a chance to even steal some more playing time. Into the hands and off to the races by Matherin. 
A stutter step high off the glass. Whether he meant to or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and, and, and just confidence. He had felt him in the open court there. I think he, he just felt good out there. Scores his first bucket. And lost the handle on the basketball, but you never knew it. You never knew it as Baker draws a whistle that time. Dante Jackson, the head coach of this Grambling team. 51 wins in his career in his fourth season. Hales, as a younger man from Milwaukee, played at Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Ben Job Howard, the Ben Job Award winner a couple of years ago, as the top minority coach in college basketball, won that award in 2018. And you think about Grambling, what's going on, some real positives, albeit during a challenging time for all of us. They broke ground last year. The first digital library on an HBCU campus, a nearly $17 million building. Well, I like what the coach has done, Jackson, with his team and just what he's put together. A team with good athletes, good skill guys. They press like they're doing now. They run a lot of defenses. This will be a great challenge for Arizona, and you see it there. A turnover from the freshman. And this Grambling team, will, will they'll really pressure guys. They'll get after you. They'll play some zone. They'll play a little 1-2-2 two, two full court, which they did there. They want to turn you over, and I like the way his team plays. That kind of that kind of up-tempo, fun style should work for them. We saw Sean Miller a moment ago for the first time ever as the Wildcats head coach. He had three, three drafted. He had had two on a couple of occasions. You may remember Hill and Jarrett back in 13, Gordon Johnson in 14, Johnson and Hollis Jefferson in 15. But this past year, there were three drafted for the first time ever. Yeah. <laughs> And, and what's crazy about it, well, you see that, oh, man. And, 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 you know, Nico was the one that everybody thought would be the top ten pick. Uh, goes, he goes to an incredible Golden State Warrior team with Steph and Steve Kerr as his coach. But Josh Green, I mean, the athleticism, the open court, I thought Najee was a guy that just, he proved it on the court last year, obviously. Just his toughness, his physical, his physical play could shoot that 15 quarter. I think all three could have great careers. Penetration is the rule. There it is. Flying through the lane. An outstanding athletic play by Cameron Woodall. He's a junior criminal justice major. Had six points the other night. 14 minutes against Grand Canyon. 15-8. Well, Arizona leads it. And I like this. They score and go right into that full court press. They get another steal. This, this one off of Brown and right back to the rim. <laughs> How about the ball handling there by Peyton Taylor? Man out of Cleveland, Mississippi, going to work there, and a beautiful feed to Woodall, who go to the line. Now there's the double team right there. You see Brown, the experienced kid out of Seattle U. Turn it over. He's a guy that does not turn it over. So Grambling just doing a good job with the pressure. And you got to wonder about this Grambling team. Normally they would come into McHale Center, 15,000 people, the crowd would be going crazy. Maybe a little bit tougher to play right now. Pretty comfortable in here. We've seen talented mid-major teams come in here. You and I have been fortunate enough to sit together a lot at this table over the last half decade. We've seen some teams come in and maybe feed off it a little bit, too. So you see both, but I agree, usually more intimidating than it is positive. Well, I, no, you make a great point with a lot of these games with no fans. The visiting teams, good visiting teams that have confidence, that actually can be a positive. I, I've always thought the home crowd, what it does is help the home team more than it hurts the visiting team. And we'll just see here for Arizona if it gets close where the crowd would normally kind of lift them up, take them, take them on, do things special for them. Is that going to happen? Arizona right now, a lot of young guys trying to figure things out. 15-9. Your cousin from Boston. Firstleaf.com slash TV today. Field. Excited to have that one. We're really excited to have football for you on the Pac-12 Network. You're grambling down six, 15-9. These Wildcats, as we told you, coming on the air, getting to know one another. Grambling team with much more experience together, if you will. Certainly, talent wins it on the Arizona side, but hard to argue with the clear best three-point shooter on this team, Peyton Taylor, the young man out of Cleveland, Mississippi. Well, the, the scouting report says find this player at the three-point line and close with high hands. Arizona, not a great job of pressuring him, even though he shot it from deep. 
Shot 42% junior college last year from three-point land. Terry up with it again. Boy, that was a quick fire well off the mark. I mean, that one went in and out of his hands immediately. The result, not what he wanted, though. Terry dropped in at three earlier in this contest. He's got an assist as well. The loco couldn't hold on, knocked out of bounds. Here's Dalen Terry, and there's Jason Terry. Wow. No relation, obviously, but he still looks fit. He still looks like he could get out there and play. Well, he absolutely could. He played forever in the NBA. I mean, he's, he's, his body has been incredible. But, you know, we talked about in the open, the freshmen, the transfers. That may be the best pickup for Arizona this year, bringing JT in, the Jet. His impact can be so big for them in recruiting, talking to these young kids, what it's all about. I mean, seeing a guy that played that many years in the NBA, huge, huge history here, a legend at Arizona. And I think it's, it's an incredible hire by Sean Miller. He played until he was 40 years old, had a career in which the numbers stacked higher and higher and higher. And when it was all over, he scored nearly 20,000 points and gave out 5,500 assists. Yeah. Just a very successful career here then professionally. You know, the word on the street when talking to some of these athletes you know, through Zoom and from from afar is that he's pretty honest in practices yeah. and it's not street talk to where it's aggressive but it's letting players know hey are you going to help us defensively <laughs> are you going to make a shot and he still kind of has that player's edge to him let's let's call it what it is he's talking smack every right. day he's talking smack he's getting after him he challenges guys but like you said in a good way and i think players will love that so this is one we're, we're going to tell you a lot more about. It's Jordan Brown, the Nevada transfer, the McDonald's All-American. He scored 26 points in the McDonald's All-American game. He's out of Roseville, California. He just wasn't who he wanted to be with a Nevada uniform on. His freshman year, disappointing. Well, they had a great team. They had a lot of good bigs. It was hard for him to get minutes uh, on that team. Just didn't work out. Sometimes the cases and new scenery uh, will be big. I just like right there the left. Uh, you look at the left hand, how skilled he is. I was wondering how he'd be more of a, a physical player. He is physical, but I like his skill set. Terrell Brown Jr., who also swings in the corner, number 31, as he watches underneath. James Akinjo penetrating, didn't share it that time, didn't need to. I I'm going to say right there, that's Mark Lyons. Like, kind of looks like him. I mean, that's what Mark Lyons would do. And look at the, look at the fired up right there, the clap and the lead. That is the, the way Mark Lyons played, physical, got to the rim, unafraid of anything. So he went to the free throw line in a year plus for Georgetown, had a handful of second year games. He went to the free throw line a bunch, Matt. As a matter of fact, nearly 200 times. And with that penetration, it's easy to see why he journeyed to the free throw line a lot. Yeah, he's strong, he's physical, he's out of Oakland, California, he's tough. He scored 442 points as a freshman. I mean, do the math on that for his sophomore, junior, senior season if he stayed or obviously here he's a prolific scorer and when we're paying matt to be here we're going to make him work we're going to take advantage of his insights because for so long he has seen the game your pac-12 storylines take the top one first giving thanks well i think just the opportunity to play you've talked about a lot today just being out here these players are so happy play somebody else but just playing the game and i think part of that the segue is a flexible mindset he said the, the sacrificing for them to see and just understand, you know, that they have to do things to want to play. You talked about them going 5 a.m. They are getting tested right now every day because they want to play. They are doing everything they can. We'll talk about it later with the trainer, Justin Kokoski. I mean, they all want to play, and it takes a lot to get there because they've got to be safe and healthy. It's amazing as that one is off the mark from the left hand of Cameron Woodall. You're independent for some of the first times in your life. You're free to do whatever you want to do. But in this scenario, it's the exact opposite. That freedom just doesn't exist. And you, you're not doing anything wrong if you step outside of the freedom, but you have a chance to cost your team two, three weeks worth of games and playing time for you. If you'd like to develop as a student, as an athlete, as a possible pro, you just have to fall into line. The discipline needed to get these games on the court it's exceptional. It, it really is. And the NBA, you know, really had the blueprint, the bubble. You know, they can't do that in their current situation, but they're trying to. They're trying to be as much of a bubble as they can and be really careful. 
Yeah, long distance, well off the mark for Grambling. Coloco ends up with the basketball in his hands. Grambling shooting 25%, 4 of 16 to start things. Arizona 8 of 19 from the floor, that's 42%. Just 1 of 6 for Grambling from long distance, along the baseline, no whistle there. And then a late whistle. It looked like he got hit on the arm as he went up, and a nice, quick move there by Terry. Got to the baseline pretty quickly. Sixth team foul whistled against Grambling. Now you forget sometimes the nickname the Tigers because Grambling was such history and it's such a respected name with what they've accomplished as a university with the impact. But they are the Tigers. Grambling's really all you need to say. <laughs> That's right. You, it's like Prince. I mean, it's Grambling. It's Elvis. It's Grambling. You know who they are. And I've, I've always uh, always been affiliated with them because as a, as a Chiefs fan, I always remember Buck Buchanan. And they always say, from Grambling. And it's my team. And that was one of the, the first memories I have of them talking about Grambling. Dale and Terry, as we mentioned earlier, prepped earlier at Corona del Sol in Tempe, Arizona, then transferred to Hillcrest Prep. Put on about 16 pounds during the shutdown when he couldn't go too far. This is a four-star recruit, by the way. And Terry, a very, very talented AAU team, the Compton Magic. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. It's, it's fun in the coverage of the next generation of great college basketball players with groups like Ball is Life. You can get to know these players pretty well before they arrive here. Terry's a great example. Yeah, he is. And I, I watched him on that last defensive uh, sequence, and he did a great job on ball defense. You look, you notice the length. He was able to get the rebound in that possession. Then he brought it up. So a pretty skilled guy that can do everything for this team. I, I think he could be. I'm watching him now on the ball. Could end up being a pretty good defender for this team this year. Offensive foul, Jordan Brown with a bucket a moment ago, now has six points. Brown expected to have a big impact, along with that young man. I'm Doug Hirsch. Relief. Thum, 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 thum. Are there numbers that define chemistry? Matt was talking about it. I think six assists of your nine field goal makes, that's a start. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge start, and you could see the way they play so far. This is a team, to me, that's hungry. You know, nobody probably came into the season thinking, oh, I'm the guy, or I'm, you know, this position, that position. So many young players are out there. I think Sean Miller has, this is kind of a Sean Miller team. You, you think back to a Xavier and, you know, tough teams that he had, but I think he enjoys this process, trying to figure out this lineup and all these guys really playing together. There's another potential assist as Matherin really gets to the rim quickly and hard. And I like that physical drive that he had right at the goal. It was almost like a broken dam there. Once the water started flowing past the pressure, it was on. And you could see Matherin with that look in his eyes was excited for his first highlight reel play. There was a foul that'll put him on the line instead. Yeah, and you know Sean Miller in that timeout knew the press was coming. They had, they had had a couple turnovers, and I think he told his guys, look, here's how we're going to break it. And by the way, we're not going to break it and pull it back out to the three-point line. We're going to attack that press, make them pay for it. A great history and a lot of depth to this young man at the line, Haitian-Canadian Benedict Matherin, who at 12 years old lost his brother in a tragic accident at 15. And so... A lot he's been through already, and there are some hurts that will never heal. He does, when he goes through those challenges, channel them into basketball. As he's there to help out Matherin a little bit defensively. Number zero on the back of that Arizona jersey. Terry a little bit too aggressive. Back the other way there is Matherin. They'll go ahead and count it. Oh, baby. Did he, that athleticism. Did he get it before it got up to the to the backboard? It might have hit the backboard first. You see him come weak side here. Looked like he got it there. Sut, I, I thought he might have gotten it before it hit the You want to call that a clean block, do yeah, you? Yeah, okay. I do. And they talked about this kid playing above the rim. I mean, he blocked Ooh. it below the rim, but got above to the rim after. So, really athletic. Sis Jen, a basketball player, NC State. He, he went and did that time at 
NBA Academy Latin America, and for him, it was just adding another language that he had to learn. He can jump, but he can also speak five different languages. He can shoot a three and comes up short. I had to add that to his that's, resume. That's right, right. He got the good shot. I like the confidence. And we'll see this Grambling team play a little zone there. You know, Sean Miller's teams in the past have struggled at times versus the zone. See how this team does with it. I think Akinjo, the way he drives, will help them in the zone. A lot of times, point guards, if you get a shooting point guard, they sort of stand around the three point line. I think Akinjo is going to drive it into the lane. That will open up lanes for them. A couple of skyscrapers coming back in. Miller going big now with Coloco coming on, along with Julius Tubelis, the six foot 11 inch freshman out of Lithuania. There have been some good battles, I am told, with the two that just came on in practice. Yeah. To Bellis, though, I just the size sticks out to me for the freshman. How big he is. Beautiful penetration, nice pass. The hot Munford unable to execute on the shot. There's another chief for grappling in an unkind role. There's Coloco. Sends it back the other way. One extra pass, and Baker fires it up along the baseline, gets the potato bounce. Well, I think Baker is their best shooter. If you want to just line it up and play the NBA three-point shoot co shooting contest, bring out the, the rack of balls, I think he would beat anyone on this team. You see it there, he gets a friendly roll, but I think they're going to need him to make a lot of threes this year, Darren. Yeah, he made those four threes in a big win against Washington on the road last year. At 17 points, he doled out four assists, but he had four threes in that game, and they needed him. Now, with the guy like Nico Mannion gone, his role even more important, and kind of being the two guard as well. Beautiful vision on the pass, unable to turn it into a bucket. Still Cats basketball. Well, I think that's when Coloco's just got a dunk. I, he was in position, runs the floor, not happy with the miss, but... Not going to miss it if you just rip it through the net. And I think his coaches will talk to him about it, and he'll he'll agree with that. Under 445 as we look at the shot clock at 8. Long distance off the back of the iron, flying through the air, grabbing the rebound as Mather. Another miss from long distance for the Cats. Wildcats on a 12-2 run. Grambling has made just one of their last 11. A couple of minutes that scoring drought for Grambling. Kinju has five points. Terry with four. Mather with four. Today, we're hoping to introduce you to a lot of these players if you're a long-distance Cats fan as a matter of fact All of you are right now outside of about two dozen. No one's in the building So we know Tucson's watching because usually Tucson's in this building. They're in the building. Yeah I mean, they, and there's so many people here in Tucson set that they, they will come to the game they'll, they'll tape it on DVR and then they'll go home and watch it. So I mean, when you're talking about, you know, we'll talk about loot more today, but you know, we had that moment of silence. I mean, it, it's just amazing how how much these fans, how passionate they are. So I can't imagine some of them sitting at home just itching to get in here to McHale Center right now. Matt Muehlbach saved himself and trended young when he added the word DVR. He was trending old when he used the phrase taped it, but then when he added DVR, he stayed young for us. So you hung in there. You barely saved yourself. <laughs> you right. started to say just I, taped I the game, it. but then you added DVR, uh, DVR. So you trended young again. How many times do I say the same thing? To my young and beautiful wife that uh, would she tape the game for me? <laughs> I missed that time flying through the lane by Tubelis. Big wingspan. You talked about that. Along the baseline, sets up a three-point attempt and a miss. And a second chance in the big fella underneath. Good to see him with an impact. Sarian McGee out of Milwaukee. Woo! Back the other way. There's Jordan Brown again. Yeah. Playing, and deserves a woo. Yeah, playing above the rim there. And, and, and the key run in the court. I mean, big fella gets up despite a make. You get up and get that fast to the other side of the rim. Arizona, another assist. 
Four for four from the floor. He's got eight points. He's got eight rebounds. And he's got a highlight reel play, too. Wow. See yourself. He Browns for the team. There is Terrell Brown Jr. out of Seattle. He'll get bigger and stronger and faster and more impactful. But Jordan Brown's making a lot of noise right now. A ton. Beautiful pass underneath. That's twice we've seen that where Tubelis ends up with a basketball in his hands and immediately converts. Well, how good was the look? You mentioned it by Matherin right there. The little, it was not, I don't even want to call it a lob. It was like a touch passed over a defender right to Tubelis. Easy, easy knock in for him. But I love what Matherin did right there with the ball on the break. See the freshman right there, just a uh, nice job. And again, we go back. The theme of tonight seems to be the unselfishness of this team, Sut. Really, really looking for each other. A mid-range jumper in the key. We're talking about the big game where Cal is leading Stanford 10-3 right now. The big game going on. Both teams off the winless start. Somebody's going to have a win today. Ooh, swatted away. There's Brown again. Foul of frustration chasing that basketball down. Jordan Brown thrilled, thrilled to be out there playing. Remember, he was practicing last year with Zeke Nagy, with Chase Jeter. He was out there working with these guys, and he was the one that was getting beat up pretty good. Yeah, and when you don't play for 614 days, you're ready to go. And I... You know, the one thing I remember after shoot-around Sut was he was the guy, everyone would go in the locker room, and he's, he was out here every single shoot-around. And he would, he would shoot for another 30, 40, sometimes an hour with a couple managers and got a ton of work in. Just seemed to have a great work ethic. He's got eight points. He's got nine rebounds. That's in a single half. Both Ooh. these teams in the bonus. That one taken away. Kinjo on the move all the way. With a shot at a three-point play. Akinjo with the steal. James with the bucket. The young man out of Oakland, California. Now that's that's the grittiness of, of Oakland right there. I remember playing against guys in Oakland that do that to me. And the key for him is getting up in. You know, you're not gonna steal it if you're not pressuring someone, but then a great job feels the pressure, kind of hangs a bit, and then the knock-in for the three-point try. Quick note that Bears mentioning with that penetration there in the turn of the line. Five times in his year plus at Georgetown, five times he had ten or more free throw attempts in a game. That's a guard. And, and, and free throws, a couple things. One, aggressive play. Guys that looking to score, looking to nice turnaround right there. But I think the second is just a big body, and you can see it with Akinjo really well put together. Prince Moss goes over 500 career points at Grambling. A long athletic. Man, they talk about him hunting shots when he gets going to work out there. He hunted that one, and that was a beautiful shot there. A young man from Bessemer, Alabama. 6'7", 180, but skilled. Oh, Dr. Matherin with the triple. Uh, you know, you never know in these games who's going to show up and, and what people are going to look like. And in some ways, it's kind of cool that we didn't even see a red-blue or a game at all because you see him just from, from scratch. And Matherin looks really good to me. I mean, just kind of everything he does. And he's running the floor right now. I want to see, I'd love to see him get an opportunity to get above the rim because that's what I've heard about. And we saw with the shot block attempt, certainly where he elevated very quickly. A late whistle, but a whistle nonetheless. Rand Cobb, the Georgian whistled, whistled that time. First personal foul, by the way. On Cobb, and back to the line he goes. Here as goes we your guy. Early. <laughs> Here back goes your guy. Line. He's had some interesting games. So you look back at his freshman year. He had a game against St. John's his freshman year. Akinjo did. We had 17 as a freshman with five assists in that game. It was 11 of 12 from the line. 11 of 12. 81 percent free throw shooter in his career. I remember asking Sean Miller about playing in the Big East as a freshman. Now, the Big East was a little different when Sean played in the mid-'80s. True. But it's a, it's just an incredibly tough conference. And when you win Freshman Player of the Year, 
you're a tough kid. Sean Miller did it. I remember him telling me about having to go against the Georgetown press, some of those teams playing in Syracuse. And he looked, he had so much respect for that league and the way guys played. And you can see it with Akinjo, not afraid of anything, just a fearless point guard. Akinjo's got eight points. He's got a couple of assists. He's three of seven from the floor, just one of three Akinjo from the free throw line. As he shares the basketball with Dalen Terry now. Try to thread the needle. And that one off the mark. A scrap for the basketball. Cobb and Bellis getting together. Well, I was, well, I was looking, uh, Sut, at those numbers. You, you talked about the free throws uh, of Akinjo, and I was just wondering, I compared him to Mark Lyons. Mark Lyons shot 146 free throws his senior year here in Tucson. So the comparison really is a good one because of the way they play. Cobb takes his journey to the line. By the way, Pepperdine and UCLA, they're going to triple overtime now. Locked up at 89 in that game down in San Diego. Like just jumping out of the building for Matherin. Huge leap ability. And down to 30 seconds. Coloco checked back in a moment ago. He goes to work from the free throw line and a miss that time. I think that's a shot he could make, but probably can get that any time in the possession. They want to swing that a bit and get it back if it's there. That's part of it, right? I mean, that definitely is part of it. Letting the offense go through you, letting everyone collapse on you, and then sharing. Probably just foul. comes with Here's your guy. Time. Here's your guy. <laughs> He's going back to the line. I'll claim it. All those journeys to the line. We'll shoot a couple. Salesian High School, by the way, Ken Joe. Uh, Salesian High School. That was in the league I was in, the Oakland Catholic League back in, 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 in the day. I think they've moved uh, divisions, but I remember playing at Salesian. And again, a, a tough school. Always had good talent there. You know, another guy that can get to the line. I think it's going to be interesting when he plays Remy Martin from ASU and those two go at it both guys are really strong really aggressive and live at the free throw line there are a handful of players that a lot of people are starting to talk about a bit but Matt's been jumping out in conversations these are guys you're excited to see play in 20 21 because you think they'll do even more than expected. Well, Coloco, we've talked a lot about today. I think he's got has a huge ceiling this year. Plummer was a guy nobody even knew about till the Pac-12 tournament that one day. I think he had 39 points. He went crazy from three. Isaiah Mobley. Hey, everybody talks about his brother Evan. And I think the two Oregon guys in Folly Dante, Will Richardson. They were playing behind some great players. Dante was hurt a lot last season. Will Richardson kind of playing in the shadow of Pritchard. Those two guys, I think, have a chance to be big-time players, be all Pac-12 type players this year. Evan had 21 and 9 in that recent overtime win over Cal Baptist, but Isaiah had 13 and 10 rebounds. Well, and, and again, Evan is the is the lottery pick everybody's talking about, but Isaiah really has a lot of skill in that second year. Speaking of skill, and we just we just talked it right now about Cobb knocking it down from ever, or I'm sorry, Moss from deep. Sean Miller in a very unique setting came out with this team. He goes back in with this team. There's not a lot of ovations because only family are here. But what we saw was a very positive first half for the Wildcats. They've created their own crowd, their own noise, their own support, and they've shared the basketball nearly to perfection. They lead Grambling by 16. Halftime with Ashley now. Hey, coach who had such a fingerprint, who built this program really to where it is in 24 seasons, nearly 600 career wins here. Lude will be remembered with the patch and obviously your head coach when you played here. Well, he was a legend. I mean, you know, it was an unbelievable legend. So many things that I remember about him, all, all of my teammates. I mean, I think there's two categories. I think of the players and what he did for the players. Uh, 
uh, making us better, the winning, the Final Fours, the Sweet Sixteens, what he did for guys to get to the pros, the development. Um, but then off the court, you think of players, managers that talk about him and the life lessons that we all learn and, and, and the friendships that we all have. I mean, today, my best friends are former players. I think the second thing, Sut, the impact, what he did in Southern Arizona, what he did for U of A, the city of Tucson, uh, all of Southern Arizona. I mean, he created an absolute basketball power, a top 10 team in the last 30, 40 years here in Tucson. And it, 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 it the, the, the thread, the fiber of this community is just soaked with Lute Olson, all those old players that we see up in the in the uh, cutouts right now. But Tucson is Lute. It's a it's a basketball town that is passionate about this sport that will never go away. I think without a doubt, he is the most impactful person ever in Southern Arizona. Second to only John Wooden. And well said, by the way. Very well said. As it pertains to this conference's winning percentage, second to only John Wooden. When it matters most, playing within the Pac-10 back then, the Pac-12. Yeah, really was the successor in a way to Wooden. Not obviously the, the 10 titles and all of that, but just the way he handled himself. Kind of that that next generation Pac-10 Wooden, if you will. For middle justice major Travell Cunningham with the bucket. The whistle back the other way. That's a couple of offensive fouls back to back. You shared the story of these photos where fans shared their photo with Loot. Yeah, they had. They, I talked to them about whether they're going to put a photo of Loot, and they thought, you know, not right now. So fans have decided, you know, these fans that, that have bought these cardboard cutouts, they can put their dog, they can put themselves, their friend, whatever. And some of them put a picture of Loot. There's a number of them up there. Uh, uh, we saw uh, Mike Molinari, our producer, showed all of the ex-players at one point, such. So they are going to have every single player that ever played at Arizona up in those stands. Wow. So, right, we're waiting. We're waiting for yours. As for it's my a check to clear. Bucket right back the other way. Are you going to get a good seat? Do you know where you're sitting? Uh, I'm going to be. I'll probably be up in the in the yellow, way up in the nosebleed somewhere. Always humble. Always uh, Lou Holtz. Oh, there's Coloco closing. Closing on that one, and, and again, being aggressive, Sean Miller loved it. Nice pass there by Terrell Brown. And Terrell Brown's a guy that, again, there are little things he does. Case of point today, he doesn't have a point yet, but he's now got four assists and two rebounds. Played in a recent scrimmage in which he had similar numbers, four points, four rebounds, and now is a steal, in which... Sean Miller made it clear, oh. up and under the bucket there, and takes it away. Terrell Brown was dubbed the best player in the game, with just four points, four rebounds, because he does a lot of little things well. And just had that steal, as you mentioned, and didn't have had a quiet first half. Ooh. Cameron Woodall drops another one, and he's got Woodall 10 from now. Deep. He's, he can shoot it. He's played well tonight. Yeah. Man from Raymond High School in Mississippi. Yeah, I'm interested to see Brown here in the second half. He's a guy that averaged 20 a game last year for Seattle. Gets his points in the lane. Not really a shooter, kind of a driver, a penetrator. You see it right here. Got to take it away that time. He's a great story, Matt. So this is a junior college player. Not really any D1 offers out of high school. Goes to Shoreline Community College. Walks on at Seattle, which is a mid-major program. And by the time it's all said and done, he's earning a scholarship. And he's scoring a ton of points. And in his final year, he's averaging 21. Yeah, a guy that came out of Garfield High School. There's so much talent up there and surprising he didn't get something out of high school but i almost feel right now like you know you're the guy that the, the senior transfer you, there's a lot to prove in that situation we've seen guys come over in those fifth year transfer situations that sometimes it takes them a few games just to kind of earn things they're they're really excited about showing what they can do they've been around the game enough uh, they want to make an immediate impact so i still look for him to have a, have a really good season this season one of the reasons he wanted to make that transfer, sitting over there on that bench, Jason Terry. Yeah, his godfather, right? That's exactly GT. right. The Jet. That's exactly right. Hey, 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 hey! So anyway, looking forward to bigger impacts with regard to points, but he's already had an impact in this game. The son of Shalalia and Terrell. 
And when he went to shoreline, so he finds his way, just to finish the thought, to Juco, and he puts up 30 a game. And, and as you said, though, he started there as a walk-on. Off the mark. A couple of hands. Katz goes in and out. With the hands of Matherin and Terry as well. Arizona shooting 40% on the entire contest, 17 to 42. Grambling at 33%. Both teams even with 11 turnovers. To Grambling's credit, you know, with the pressure from the Wildcats and defense they have put up, kind of regulated the turnovers as Grambling team. You, you know, and you think about right now, Darren, mm. as Grambling scores, and Grambling's actually winning this second half right now by three. Arizona turns it over again. It, this is almost the time where McHale Center would sort of stand up, kind of get this team going. Not going to have that this year, obviously. No, you're exactly right. Feeling the footsteps of Grambling, making it an interesting contest, getting hot over. Yeah. Arizona four turnovers in their last three minutes. All of a sudden, the crowd just kind of, come on, boys, let's go. Yeah. And they just all going to be self-motivated this year. Th this actually reminds me. I remember playing here, and we would have scrimmages on Saturdays before the season started. And a lot of times we'd have them on a Saturday during a football game as uh, Matherin hoist one from deep. And we would get 100 fans. They'd come in, you know, from the tailgates, come see what was happening. It, it's the same atmosphere as what that used to be like. Carry on Randolph. He had 10 points against Grand Canyon the other night. He had nine steals against Grand Canyon. Nearly half of his season total from last year. And a big bucket there. And some energy on that Grambling bench. You betcha, says Dante Jackson. We're winning this second half by five. You're watching Team 9 winning that third overtime. Well, I knew that would be a tough game. Pepperdine, a great team right now, as you see. Akinjo knocked one down. That was shot confidently. He's got a nice stroke, but I think big for UCLA just to win that since they lost the San Diego State game the other night. Yeah, Cody Riley had double double in that game and a loss for UCLA. Foul troubles cost him some time today. When you play that long of a game, everyone's going to find themselves in foul trouble. At about the 11 minute mark, the Wildcats up 14, Grambling with a nice little run. 15-13, the second half score of this one. Akinjo gets comfortable with this shot, well short, after dropping a three in a moment ago. Now, it looked like he wanted to shoot it, paused, and then shot it anyway. And one of the hardest things to do is once you pause, it probably best to kind of regather right there, like 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 a golfer, like Tiger Woods when he would when he would go for the swing and then stop it, but hard to do, and and, and went up with that one not in rhythm. A lob underneath, Hamling pulls it back together. Spacing is what they need right now. Vince Moss clears the other side, asks for the basketball. A little shot fake. Here he goes. He'll go to the line. Prince Moss went over the 500 career point scoring mark earlier as a member of this Grambling team. A transfer in from Iowa Central Community College. Now they're taking it at this Arizona defense this second half. I thought Arizona, maybe the most impressive thing they did in the first half was play D. I mean, they, they were really connected. I thought they got out, pressured the ball, they rebounded well. Second half, Grambling's really taking it at him. Moss, the criminal justice major, who has five times in his Grambling career topped the 20 point mark. There have been some big moments for him. Ask Mississippi Valley State last March in a key late season game, had 25 with 10 rebounds. So long and athletic. This Grambling team, with its rich history, not only as an athletic program, but as a university and as an HBCU has never found their way to the NCAA tournament. They'd huh. love to have that one change. Yeah, that's surprising to me. Last six years in the SWAC, it's been Texas Southern going four times, representing the conference four times. Grambling's best years back in the early 80s, 79, 80, they won 22 games. 80, 81, 18 wins. Those are the two finest years. Well, I like what Jackson has done with this program the last couple of years. They, they look again like 
you know, they have some good talent. They compete. I like how they play. They get up and down, pressure you. Showing some, uh, showing some aggressiveness this second half. And by the way, because we're not traveling many and not many are coming into this building, we don't get to see the world famed Tiger marching band. I mean, Grambling's certainly known for a lot yes. of things, but their marching band second to none. And in fact, the marching band that was deemed worthy of both of Barack Obama's inauguration, inaugural huh. parades in 09 and 13. That's how good that That's marching how band good you is. Are, yeah. You know, Sean Miller watching Coloco looked like he traveled twice in yes, that possession, not able to corral it. And the zone has been tough for them in the second half. Checking on Christian, he's got seven points, three of eight from the floor. He's got nine rebounds. Christian Coloco. He's a long ways away from the basket right now. You know, and Brown has 11, so both those big guys doing their jobs on the board. Take it to his left. That one knocked away. Peyton Taylor, or I should say Rahan Cobb, turned that one over. Well, and, and that was Terry with those long arms. Terry, as much as anyone on this team, has just crazy length. He's six, it's a touch under 6'8", uh, has a 7'1 wingspan. And so you saw it right there. Got that left arm in there, able to knock it off the knee of the Grambling player. I think he could be a really good defender as Brown showing some athleticism and some skill hanging with the left hand coming from three-point land. Yeah, you're exactly right. The left, that was the, the most fun going southpaw at the last yeah. minute with it. He knew the, the contact was coming from the other side. And as they line up for a triple, that grambling squat. Terry with the, an off-the-mark lead to Akinjo, who pulls it back together. I don't want Brown to do some scoring. For his own confidence because he's done everything else up top of the arc right now. Terrell Brown Jr. He goes to work along the baseline. Stop, pop, mid-range jumper. A little bit strong off the back of the iron. And that's where he likes to work that mid-range. And I thought Akinjo did a good job facilitating there. Could have shot it a couple times, tried to get things going. I tell you to go up strong not only the Cameron Christian swing that arm cleared his own space went right at Brown with that arm But then turned it into a bucket. Wow yeah, Nice dish from way out on the perimeter to get that that down to Kristen who was in great position under the rim Played for Leon Rice did this man at Boise State University. He played for a good Boise State team a couple of years ago. They won 23 games. Well, they like to, to play spread out. They play a little bit. Their goal is to play like the Warriors. So he's familiar with that wide open type of game. Long distance dedication. Akinjo with the triple. Feels like Akinjo knows the time as well knows when to shoot it arizona stumbling just a bit akinjo right on point time out <laughs> plastic send it to your pharmacy or have it mailed to you get the health care you deserve at goodrx.com Well, we're thrilled that college basketball certainly is back and back safely. We hope for a long, long time, and we'll be with you on the Pac-12 Network's Arizona Wildcats fans, UTEP, and, and uh, obviously an early big game against Colorado as the schedule rolls out. Northern Colorado, Bakersfield, and Cal Baptist, who, by the way, Cal Baptist giving UCLA a run for their money. We'll have them all for you. Pac-12 Network's. You wanted to talk coming on the air about a couple of guys. You wanted to talk about Jordan Brown. You wanted to talk about the work of the guard play for this team. But Brown has just lived up along with the Kinjo to what you were hoping for. Yeah, caught that pass one dribble all the way to the rim with the left. And then been impressed with the way Akinjo shoots it. You know, he, he didn't shoot a great percentage at Georgetown. It was lower 30s. Um, but he did. We talked about the five assists that he had there, a guy that can facilitate. But he's a scorer. Let's face it. He likes to get the ball up, and he does at a great pace. But he shoots it better than I thought. So I think he uh, nice form to it. 
And again, you got to remember as a freshman, those percentages were a little down. Not easy to shoot as a freshman. You have the ball in your hand all the time. You're shooting a ton of threes. Guys are all over you. It's the Big East. Not surprising that in a way that he's shooting it well. Terry sits, Brown sits, Akinjo comes on. By the way, in the timeout, I, I received a text from somebody. We were talking about Grambling and all the incredible things they have done. And I can't believe I forgot this, but in the first Super Bowl of all time, Grambling was part of the halftime show, their band. You were talking about the band. You bet. The other band in that halftime show, Arizona. Wow. Arizona and Grambling, the halftime show at the first Super Bowl. So I'm going to be honest with you, and maybe this is just me being nosy in, in your world, but whoever sent you that, <laughs> if you're allowed to give them credit, I mean, you kind of need to give them credit. Do I, I need to say Mike Scoville? Yeah, that's okay. a great note. Like that's, you, you, I mean... Yeah, and you're the kind of guy, you're like a very selfless guy. That's a great note, and I'm going to let you yeah. be the one who said it. But Mike's got to get that. That's Mike's got to get note. credit, right? Yeah, you bet. Attribution there. Mike, thank you for, for wow. filling in there. See, everybody wonders, do we have people in our ear telling us all these things? No, we're just getting texts now from people all over the, all over Tucson, all over the country. <laughs> text me, maybe we'll put it on the air, right? If it's good enough. If you're in good standing, <laughs> and if you're in good standing, obviously, well, with Matt. Well, and, and but the thing with Scoville is you you, you got to make sure that it's right. I, I believe him, but should I have fact-checked it nope. before or just, just go with it? Nope. Moving along. Under eight minutes to go in this one. We said it. It happens. And a whistle underneath quite a ways away from the basket. And Bayou Classic every year when the Battle of the Bands with Southern. It's always fun. It's been... Replicated in movies, it's been emulated in movies like Drumline, but it's the original from the Bayou Classic, the world-famed Tiger Marching Band for Grambling. <laughs> Jarrell Cunningham drops in the first. Cunningham has five points now. He averaged five with three rebounds and a couple of assists last year. <laughs> At one point and did not come up with a single field goal make against the Grand Canyon 0 for 7. His team's hanging in there with the point of pride down 12. A runner through the lane coming up empty the Cats at that time. Akinjo with the miss. A good shot by Baker getting back recognizing and those guards better get back with Baker if Akinjo goes to the rim a lot. Oh, 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 oh baby. Cameron Woodall, Woodall fired up as he comes down the court. Cam Slam there with a follow-up. It's a 10-point game. Now he's played a great game, too. He's not just the dunk, the highlight reel he can put on his tape, but been solid for this Grambling team. So you may not hear it clearly as that one is spotted up for three. But after that big jam running through the lane and a chance to go to the line that time for Matherin, and you might not have heard, heard it clearly, but I think it's very fun and it's youthful and it speaks to how these teams are being created without a crowd. Grambling with the follow jam by Cameron Woodall and you can hear the entire bench, defense, clap, clap, defense. You never would hear an organized <laughs> cheer like that after a play like this. Well, look at him here, no box out. You look at Arizona on that weak side, you gotta find somebody. Even if it's not your man, you gotta find somebody to put a body on. He comes uncontested and knew what to do with it. Matherin at the line has seven points. He is two of two from the free throw line. Make it two of three. Anyway, fun to hear what would be a crowd, for sure a crowd assigned to cheer yeah. from the bench. Yeah. You know, you'd hear it maybe from the cheer squad, the men and women leading the cheers. They all stood up, got as close as they were allowed to get to one another, and chanted defense with the claps in between. That was fun. Those are the kind of things we're going to hear a little bit more of this year. Because what else are you supposed to do when you want your team <laughs> to play right. defense? Well, as you said, I mean, it happens all the time. You just never hear it. No, you would never hear the bench get it going, ever. But they're the crowd. That's the Grambling That's... crowd. That's a great little moment. 58-47, 11-point lead. I say, I thought he could have let that go.
five point differential in the second half. Grambling plus five on top of Arizona, 24 19. Yeah, and Sean Miller's gone small here. He's got Matherin or Terry at the 3 4. Brown at the five. Let's see if this team can maybe spark them a little bit. They need to rebound with a smaller lineup. Fires it up off the glass. A couple of second chances. Unable to do it there to Bell Cunningham. You could see sneaking in Cameron Woodall looking for another follow jam. Well, I think he's hoping against this zone. Get another shooter out there. Spread the floor a little more. Maybe a little more penetration. Really got five guys behind the three-point line. Harry along the base. A little runner. It's off the mark. Brown go to down pretty hard. Does so with Kristen. Well, to, to follow up on those on those text messages, I just got one from Reggie Geary, and he said that Reggie Geary is the greatest player in U of A history. So okay. this thing could get out, get out of control really quickly. Thank goodness, there's only six minutes left in this. Yes, one. I kind of created a monster with encouraging Matt to give credit to the text <laughs> there. <laughs> and six minutes. And they're only up 11. I mean, this thing's a lot closer than we thought coming into it. Brown's got 13 points as his first free throw make as Sean Miller looks on. Now, this is no excuse, but again, you know, because all these teams are in the same position, but, you know, this is really their first red-blue game, their exhibition game, their first, you know, practice with refs. I mean, there's no secret scrimmage. There's no anything. So, I mean, there's so much to figure out for all of these teams. Oh, and this is 2020, and unfortunately, probably a good portion of 2021, our new life, an offensive foul. Handed out to Grambling that time. Looks like we got Cameron Kristen. Kristen with the eighth team foul. That's his fourth personal. He is the lone Grambling Tiger with four fouls. Well, and I'll be interested just to see how Arizona closes this game out. I mean, this 15 minutes, or first 15 minutes of the second half has not been great. Grambling has played well, though. Give them credit. But Arizona struggled with the zone. They haven't knocked down shots. There's another miss. Seem to, seem to be playing just a little bit disjointed. I'd like to see how they finish here in a, a great drive right there by Kristen. And Kristen had it, the fly through the air just couldn't close it. Left that basketball from his hands a little bit low from the rim. Brian Thomas, by the way, started it with a nice tip. He has been fun to watch underneath. He's challenged defensively that time. And a whistle underneath. Better, better penetration, better sharing of the basketball that time. Yeah, in Arizona, one of the things they like to do against the zone is they'll put like a three-man, a four-man up at the free throw line. And a lot of times that guy has been, you know, their most skilled player, a guy that can catch it, turn, and look. You know, when you look here, they just have guys that are freshmen like Matherin, like Terry, that I think can be those guys, haven't had a lot of experience in that situation. So one of the reasons they might be struggling, and I think the other thing, just not knocking down shots, they've had some open looks. And what did we say is one of the keys this season, can Arizona become a good three-point shooting team? I don't think they have to be a great three-point shooting team just a good one they really haven't shot it well today no field goals to catch in the last 330 as we reach the five minute mark in this one. Oh my goodness shifting to the left hand becoming a southpaw banging it off the glass and a chance for three cam woodall By the way, he of the incredible flex over there on the sidelines. A hot Munford <laughs> slid into the shot there. Thought he'd show off the biceps and support of his teammate Cameron Woodall. Well, like I said, I've been impressed with Grambling. This played up there at at, uh, at Grand Canyon the other night. You know, didn't play great. Grand Canyon took it to him a little bit, but came back and played well today. Really got after it in the second half. Oh. A little bit out of control that time, and Sean Miller pops up out of his crouch. And some words for Benedict Matherin. 
Thomas whistled for the foul that time. They got Brian Thomas, his fourth personal. Well, the one thing I was thinking about with Sean is having that mask on. You know, he, he talks so much during the game. And obviously he has a deep, loud, echoing voice that you can hear when you get into a, an arena. And uh, just wondered how that mask would affect him. I guess the one thing is, you know, Sean Miller, a lot of times you can see what he's thinking just with his eyes. His eyes are as expressive as anybody's eyes in college. So we'll know that. Not happy with that call. Uh, he's working it a little bit. There's no doubt about it. He's working himself in the midseason form as well, very early in the season. And no coat and tie. I like the I like the look, the sweats with the uh, the collared shirt. I think we're gonna see that from, from most teams this year. Uh, Coach Jackson on the other side as well doing the same thing. I mean with no fans, I know they're on TV, but it's kind of becoming a trend now to dress a little more casually at these games. I think it's a good trend. Certainly a brave new world. Sean Miller usually walks out of the tunnel to 13,000 feet, people rising out of their seats. And he walked out today to just a handful. As a matter of fact, you on your social media, was it on Instagram or Twitter, you actually were one of the, the, the key camera operators, if you will, your phone of the first tunnel breakthrough of the Arizona <laughs> basketball team, where usually people would be coming out of their seats. Yeah. They you just, share, you go, go visit Matt's says, on Twitter, Instagram, both. Where'd you share it? <laughs> I think it was on Instagram. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm embarrassed to say, because I'm, I'm not a frequent poster, but you know, every once in a while I throw something on there. But yeah, it was crazy. So they, they came out. I mean, the music, I think, wasn't even on when they first walked out, and then it popped on, and it's just such a surreal environment. But as you've said earlier, I think these guys are all loving it, being out here ready to play, the opportunity to play, doing their thing, getting ready, sacrificing a lot to stay, 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 stay safe and healthy. And it's almost like an injured player when they come back and, and just the, the gratitude they have to play this game. I love the shot. Love the shot of Coach Hurley that someone shared in the stands there. An angry Coach Hurley. That was a lot of fun to see right there. Well done, Arizona fans. Who, in my seat, I call games in both buildings. So <laughs> I love both teams and I love the rivalries. But that was a fun purchase for a fan right there. <laughs> Whoa! How about that? Brown shares the basketball, closed by the other Brown, Jordan Brown from Terrell Brown Jr. Well, Grambling there extended the D, trying to get a turnover because they're trying to win this game. I, they're not worried about keeping it close. Arizona gets an open look because of it. Well, we talked about this press in the first half. Arizona was a little timid early on. And they figured out how to break it in the second half. You got to make the easy pass and attack. Jordan Brown attacking right here. He sits out a year. He has come back big. Timeout. Yes, there it is. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. We return to Matt's Pac-12 storylines. I know you talked about giving thanks, but the, the mindset, the next men up, the rapid chemistry, a couple of thoughts on those. Yeah, the last two we didn't get to, and, and the next men, it's usually next man up, but this is the whole team. And, I mean, playing time's available for everybody, Sud. Everybody's got a chance out there, but I think... The rapid chemistry you could you could basically apply to every team in the country. I mean, it's we've talked about it a ton today. You know, no practices in the summer, no individual workouts. You know, sparse weight workouts this summer. I, I remember I had a legendary coach in California, Bishop O'Dowd. Mike Phelps passed away last year, and I remember him saying to me after my freshman year, basketball players get better between April and October. That's when you work on your skills. That's a guy like Sean Miller, all the work he did in, in Pennsylvania growing up on the dribbling, the shooting, the free throws. We all did it as basketball players, and, and this summer uh, it just wasn't the same, and I don't think guys were able to really work on themselves and then really get into you know what they would do as a team. So now all this chemistry has to work together. You're working on your own game. You're trying to put your team together. Who can do that the quickest? I think we'll have a huge edge here in the first couple months. Just a quick, simple thought. And many of these athletes were college athletes in 2018 and 2019. 
But if we're to consider that all Division One schools talent year to year is very similar. There's elite talent at the Division One level, especially in the Power Five conferences. The 2018 and the 2019 athlete can't hold a candle to the 2020 athlete. The 2020 athlete, with all they've been through, even to get to this point, is far superior. Just for the reason of a couple of things. The mental toughness, the changes they've had to make, the empathy they have for the world in which they live now. The fact that they've shared similar experiences with someone my age at 50 and they're 18, 19, and 20, right? And also the understanding, no matter where you come from or what your what your background is, of social justice that may be needed to happen and that didn't happen. And so you have a brand of athlete that, no offense to the 18 and 19, 2018 and 2019 athlete, you can't hold a candle to the 2020 athlete. Well, Jack, does that make sense? It, it does. And, and Jack Murphy, the assistant coach for Arizona, talked about this team. He said, I've been coaching 20 years and I've never seen a team as hungry just to do the simple things, get up and go to, to go to class, to beat to take our test, these these COVID tests early in the morning, be in the weight room, sacrifice things that they're not used to sacrificing just because they want to play the game. Boy, high off the glass and a quick elevation and a quick bucket. Cam Woodall can play. Yeah, he's been fantastic today has led this Grambling team in everything. And another great bucket. Talk about elevation. Benedict Matherin rising high. Young man out of Montreal, Montreal. Yeah, a good dish here by Brown. Sorry, that one was by Terry. And I think Terry, again, a good passer, talked about being in that zone right at that top of the key. He could be a guy that could really distribute when you see it in the half court. That was in the full court. Grambling again trying to up that pressure, but I think Terry, when you watch him, has a high IQ, knows how to play the game. And just to finish the thought from a moment ago, that means all amateur athletes. I mean all of them. Uh, pro sports, um, certainly similar but different, but all amateur athletes, including your daughter, who's an outstanding yeah. volleyball player, all amateur athletes are superior this year because of what they've gone through. They, yeah, They're unprecedented. Well, I think I think the pros are doing it too, right? You see what, what the NBA guys had to do through the bubble and sacrifices they made. I guess on that end, the only luxury would be the paycheck that goes along with it, right? <laughs> you know, but yes, you're well, right. I, yeah, and you're right, but I think it just goes to as players how much you love the game and, and you just want to play i mean it's it ultimately everybody wants to play everyone wants to get out here and show what they can do what these guys have done their whole lives working up to we've talked a lot about this arizona team and justin kokoski who is the trainer for the arizona wildcats you know, now's as good a time of, of any to share some of the thoughts he shared with you as that one is launched from three off the mark and a good job by brown going way up to get yeah justin i talked to him earlier today and this guy i mean you were talking about a guy that needs a bonus for arizona i mean he's worked 16 to 20 hour days for a long time the one trainer who handles all of their their COVID issues. Akinjo right there knocking it down from straight away. Having a nice game today, but Kokoski has really knocked it out of the park, what he has done to keep these guys safe and healthy and, and just uh, a, a hard worker. Christopher Rounds handles the performance enhancement, the athletic physical training of these athletes, getting them bigger and stronger. He had to communicate from afar for a long time. He was on, on their own, really, these athletes had to be self-starters. But I'm glad you mentioned Kokoski and what he shared. He's, I think he shared with us there's not much sleep in his life right now. Yeah. Well, we talk, you know, I like talking. I, I know my friend Jay Billis talks a lot about the managers. I love the managers. Anybody that's played college basketball can talk for days about their managers. But the MVPs this year are the trainers. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. Lost a handle on that basketball. He's craving another shot at it at the 130 mark, 72-55 <laughs> the score. Almost like he got way too far behind the back where I like what he was thinking. Well, he skywalks with the rafters up there, though, doesn't yeah, he, he? He plays above the rim. You can tell on that. Interesting, this lineup late in this game who's out here, too. A lot of good ball handlers. 
Oh, you wanted that one in. You wanted that one in because he's done so many little things to help in this game. Brown is two for two from the line. He's got two points. He's got seven assists in this game. Off the mark at the one-minute mark. Arizona up 17 on top of Grambling. Matt and I will be back with you. Four o'clock Mountain Time, three o'clock Pacific, as Utah comes to town on Sunday. Texas El Paso. Old rivalry there. And we'll get to see Sean Miller's team, part two, as they keep putting chapters in. There's Justin, JK, Justin Kokoski. Been around here a while. Now. And that's a staff of one, so that's a hard working man with regard to athletic training. Whoa, oh, quick jump hook. He rocket hooked that one home. Well, we talked about it on the open. The two transfers that have had the experience, they have certainly been the standout players today. Jordan Brown with 19 points. Jordan Brown with 15 rebounds and a pair of assists. Eight of ten from the floor. And with Kinjo 19 as well. So it was it was quite a one-two punch and I think we're going to see that a lot this year, Seth, those two guys. Back in March, Arizona walked off the court at the Pac-12 tournament, never to return again. They return here at home in a very unique COVID-19-induced situation, and they win their first game of the season. They worked very hard to get here. Don't underestimate how much just a single game meant to both these teams. Yeah, I mean, they wanted to win and, and heavily favored. You thought they would, but a great job by Grambling. Came back in that second half and played strong, but I think the key... Arizona, but I think Ethan Anderson's up for the challenge and with him the backcourt will be Todd Eady looking forward to getting our first look at him the transfer from Santa Clara who figures to be an impact player for the USC Trojans lineups and tip off in the Galen Center next. You're watching Pac-12 Network where champions play available on Xfinity. Think, uh, <clears throat> you know what I think? I think you owe us forty-eight fifty. Wild thing. If you ride, you get it. Geico Motorcycle. Fifteen minutes could save you fifteen percent or more. Go on, humans. Put yourselves through all that pain. Waltz around.